With Father's Day here to remind us just how much we care about our dads, we thought we'd take a look at an issue related to men. Prostate cancer is the second largest cause of cancer deaths in men in both America and the UK. The prostate is part of the male reproductive system and responsible for making seminal fluid, which turns out to be partly responsible for, you guessed it, creating you and everyone else. But with time and age, the cells in the prostate, like any other cells, can pick up defects which lead to cancer. Now, your body and everything in it, including the prostate, is made up of cells. Normal behaving cells go through the cell cycle in which they grow and divide into duplicate cells through a process known as mitosis. But instead of just duplicating uncontrollably, there are numerous measures along the way to make sure these cells are healthy, functioning normally, and replicating at a controlled rate. For example, cells not only receive growth signals, they actually receive anti-growth signals to tell them when to stop growing altogether. On top of this, cells actually have a limited replicative capacity, meaning the more they replicate, the less chance they have to do it again. Finally, cells are generally localized to an area in the body and require angiogenesis, or blood vessel creation, to sustain their life and bring them nutrients. Move the cell away from this and it can't survive. Any cells that aren't following these rules or that are old and worn out are often removed by a process known as apoptosis. Apoptosis is the controlled destruction or breakdown of cells by the body. But every now and then, a mutation or error may occur which changes the cell's properties. For example, it may pick up the ability to ignore anti-growth signals in one generation, and later down the line, one of these cells may mutate to be able to evade apoptosis. These mutations are random and happen by chance, but it's the combination of a few of them that in the end leads to fast-growing, uncontrollably duplicating, immortalized masses of cells, also known as cancer. Which explains why the older you are, the more likely you are to get prostate cancer, because your cells have had many more chances to pick up multiple mutations through many generations of cells. This is one of the reasons that about 80% of men will get prostate cancer by the time they're 80. So is there anything we can do about it? In some ways, yes. If we look at Asia, we see some of the lowest prostate cancer numbers across the globe. So we might think it's genetic, and many studies support this. But interestingly, Asian men who have moved to America show a higher incidence of prostate cancer than those in Asia, in proportion to how long they've been in America. On top of this, American-born babies of Asian descent have nearly the same incidence of prostate cancer as Caucasian babies born in America. This clearly illustrates that some of the contributing factors must be diet and lifestyle based. As it turns out, some studies have shown foods like soy, tomatoes, and fish may be partly responsible for this decrease, though there is still much debate. These foods, as well as a few chemicals and medications, all have properties which may aid in normal cell regulation or prevent cell damage and mutation. On the other hand, fatty foods have been noted as potential culprits towards many cancers. At the end of the day, even though there still remains uncertainty surrounding prostate cancer and how to prevent or treat it, education and understanding are of great value. So instead of giving your dad a card this Father's Day, grab a tomato in one hand, some soy in the other, and give him the greatest gift in life, knowledge. Because the more we encourage each other to learn and live a healthy and active life, the better off we'll be. And the more we think about how our conscious choices affect our lives now and later, the greater our quality of life can become. Hmm. Happy Father's Day.